opportunity to speak here. I'm so excited to be speaking in America. This is really cool for me. How about you guys? How many of you are feeling really excited because you've got the chance to speak today? Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And speaking is one of those things that is universally recognised that people think, yeah, I don't really like it. So if you don't like it, and if you feel a little bit nervous, you know, that's fine, you're with the masses. However, what I want to inspire you to do today is to not be with the masses. You can choose to never feel nervous again. You can choose to command the attention of every single person in the room every time you speak. You can choose to deliver your presentation with less planning and no notes. So how many of you fancy a piece of that? By a show of hands, let's see. Who wants to have that kind of confidence that every time you speak, you feel great? Now, I'm going to give you some tips and tools today, some stuff to take home. And the reason you have the cards is a lot of what I do is I speak about change. Because here's the deal. Wherever you are in your life right now, not just in school, in your life, you're getting a set of results. Some results you like, some not so much. Wherever you want to get to in your life, that's a, a more exciting set of results. And the path between the two is called change. If you want to get different results, better results in the future, you have to change something. So my question to you today is, out of all the information I'm going to cram in to the next 15 minutes, are you willing to find one tiny micro change, a little easy thing that you can start doing straight away, easily and effortlessly, to be a better speaker? How many of you are willing to find a micro change today? Let's see a show of hands. Is that everybody? Brilliant. Okay. So actually, I'm going to leave it to Seamus at the end of the class when you've been through your presentations and everything else. Say, hey, did you write down your micro change? Okay, sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, listen, let me tell you. About five years ago, I met a woman, we became friends, and she told me that she was a triathlete. And so she was doing all these events, so swimming, running, cycling, sounded pretty cool, but a bit crazy. And she said to me, yeah, I train twice a day. What? Yeah, well, I get up at five, and uh, I hop on the bike, and, and then I have a swim, I do about two miles before breakfast, and I'm like, that's insane. But she had such amazing <coughs> energy that I found myself thinking, well, maybe I should do a triathlon. <laughs> so I got really crazy on this notion. And before I could stop myself, I went online. I'm in. I'm registered. I'm doing a triathlon. Cool. Now, the thing I, that I should mention is that I never learned to swim. As a kid. <laughs> As a kid, I just didn't have the chance. I, I just got by, I, I could float a little bit, but I kind of thought, well, I'll be okay, because I'm going to train for eight weeks. It'll be fine, right? So I thought, well, I wonder how far I could swim if I tried right now. So I went down to the pool, and said, oh, God, this is hard. And I stopped, and I turned around to see that I'd swum about 12 and a half metres. Uh, I don't know if you, you, you do you do metres? No. No. <laughs> okay, okay, from, from me to you, pretty well. That was kind of it. It was, it was really disappointing. You know? There's not a lot of distance there. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I started training. There was group training, 6.30 in the morning. Yay! And I turned up for swimming. And the coach said, right, everyone in the pool, do a couple of hundred metres warm-up. I'm thinking, my God, what do I do? So I was lagging behind really badly, but there was a couple of other girls and they were rubbish too. So we became <laughs> mates and we go, it's terrible, isn't it? Yeah, it's terrible. And after a couple of weeks, one by one, these other chicks all got down. Until one day I turned up, 6.30 in the morning, and I am the only person who's rubbish. And all the other girls have got really big shoulders actually. They're miles ahead of me. They're in the pool and at one point, they're at the opposite end of the pool, just as I'm turning around. And I'm like, this really, really sucks. And I 
just actually felt like crying, you know. Now, I don't know if it is crying. If you're in the pool, it's kind of just reciting the water you've drunk, isn't it? So I got out of the pool, and I was cold, and I was fed up, and I was just really over it. And I started walking down the side of the pool, and the coach says, hey, what are you, get back in. Get back in, what's the matter with you? And I said, I can't do it. I'm over it, I can't do it. And she said, why? Why can't you do it? I said, I don't know. And she's going, why though? Why? And I'm going, I don't know. I don't. Why? And I said to her, because I'm afraid. I'll wager that every person in the room has felt afraid of something at some point. By a show of hands, how many of you have ever felt afraid, nervous, anxious, any of those emotions around public speaking? Cool. Everybody. Well, hey, listen, good news is I used to be a really, really nervous speaker, like <laughs> appallingly nervous. I'd be in a business meeting where you get to introduce yourself to new teammates and you go around the table and say, your go. And I'd be sitting there thinking, when it's my go, what will I say? So I completely miss your name, sorry, your go, not listening. You know, and it's a wasted opportunity. Look at what you've lost by being in your own head, being nervous. But that's who I was. But what I did was I learned a series of techniques to never feel nervous again. Now, I just want you to take a moment and think, well, what would it mean for you if every time you spoke, you never had to feel nervous? Now, you may be thinking, well, hey, I'm not majoring in public speaking. I don't want to be on the circuit as a speaker. It's not where my career is taking me. And you may think, why is it relevant to me if I'm a computer science major or a music major or you know, whatever it is that you're studying? But the bottom line is this. If you're an engineer and you're up against an engineer who can speak really well, they're going to get the job, they're going to get the money, they're going to get the cool stuff to work on. If you're studying accountancy and your skill set is, is in the numbers and you're brilliant, but you can't articulate that to another person, you're not going to be the best accountant on the block. That applies no matter what your subject is. And the really cool thing is that when people listen to you, you can actually reach more people with your message at once. How many of you are happy if you're speaking one-to-one -one with another person? So everybody. Like, who's spoken to a person today? Didn't feel any nerves at all. Yeah? That's everybody, isn't it? Okay. It's actually the same when you're speaking to a group. And there's a series of little techniques that you can put in place so that you actually treat it like a conversation. So as I'm speaking, one thing I'd like you to notice is not just what I'm actually saying to you, but look at how casual it is. You know, I'm not making a grand, formal speech with perfect language that I have memorised. I mean, it's, it's just not like that. <laughs> that was a little bit of Shakespeare. So, but you speak great when you speak like you would to your mates in the pub. That's what makes a great speech. And actually, talking to a couple of the guys here already, people have said, oh, I chose this subject because it's easy. And actually, that's a, really, that's a great thing, because you can't talk about stuff that's hard, you know? If I were to ask you, how was your holiday? You wouldn't say, you wouldn't pick up a sheet of paper first of all and go, okay, so um, my holiday was two weeks long, and it, um, damn, I know this bit. <laughs> would you? You'd say, hey, wait till I tell you about my holiday, it was brilliant, it was so cool. And the other thing that I know you're noticing as I speak is I'm quite animated because that's how I am in real life. Now, here's an important point that I want you to know, and this is going to help you with your nerves. People aren't totally listening to the words that you use. Of the entire potential impact you make on an audience, only a very small percentage comes from the actual words that you choose. Now, I actually was quite disappointed when I heard this. 7% of the impact that I'm making comes from the words that I use. 
Now this is great news for you because it means you don't have to spend hours crafting the words. Okay, so this is good news. So there's a couple of other ways that you can make an impact apart from words. Anybody know what the other two are? Delivery. Delivery, okay. So there's a couple of ways of delivery. Delivery using your... Mind. Thank you. Delivery using your... Tone. Yeah, so your tone of voice and your body language. So the percentages, just a little bit of factual content, around 7% is the actual words I'm using, 38% is my tone of voice. Just threw that in there, just for fun. But 55% <laughs> is body language. Okay? So this might be your micro challenge. You might choose from this point <coughs> forward to focus less on the actual words that you're going to say and much more on the tone of voice or the actual body language. So quick body language tip. You want to look confident. If you sort of find yourself doing this sort of thing. You know, that doesn't look so confident, does it? You know. <laughs> okay, so just spend... <laughs> the bathroom's that way, you know. <laughs> so just spend a little bit of time focusing. Before you speak, because quite often people start speaking before they're ready, get comfortable, stand in a place that you're comfortable, arms by your side, relax. Yeah, this is pretty neat, okay? Feels good. It actually puts confidence into your body. So that's one tip. Now, tonality, tone of voice. 38% of the impact I'm having on you comes from my tone of voice. Now, when I heard this, I was thinking, well, you can't do a lot with tone of voice, can you? But just take the single word, hello. Okay, there's a thousand ways you can say this. So I see a friend, I haven't seen in ages. <gasps> hello! Okay, it's, a bit, it's a bit crazy, but <laughs> I'm just really scared. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so tone of voice, right? That's one way to say hello. I've got a friend who's got some really pathetic little tiny dogs on string, and she's obsessed with them. And I'm going to show you how she says hello to these dogs. And I want you to notice, I'm going to make a complete fool of myself for your learning, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't mind doing that for you guys, okay? So she sees the dogs and she goes, <gasps> Right? I mean, that's just stupid, isn't it? But it's completely different. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and if you've got teenagers or you are a teenager, not sure which way to go on that, uh, do you find your parents really irritating and you kind of go, they say really stupid things or they can't work their iPad or whatever, and you go, hello. <laughs> yeah? So there's lots of different ways of saying the same word. Okay, so I'm going to end, I think, quite soon. By, by telling you this little story to show you how it is that I know that focusing on those things is the right way to impact a person. So um, a, few years, a few years ago, a lot, a lot of years ago, I was about 10, a few years, a few years ago, um, my sister set me on fire. Has that, has, has that happened to anyone else? <laughs> okay, just me. Now actually, I've been mean, she didn't actually set me on fire, but I was on fire and she didn't stop me. <laughs> and what happened was, I had a, a sweatshirt hang me down from, from my three sisters before me that I really wanted. And uh, I was standing in the kitchen by the cooker and a gas flame <laughs> went onto the back of the sweatshirt. I had no idea. So I'm walking past the open doorway to the next room and my sister, who are always, always fighting with her, she said, oh, Kath, you're on fire. <laughs> so I want you to notice the words she said, you're on fire. You think those would be important words. The tone of voice she said it, and the physiology, which was she just sat there. <laughs> okay, so what did I do? <coughs> Kept walking. <laughs> because all of that made no impact on me. So the words are really, really not that important. So now I'm going to hand over to you to give a great presentation. And I want you to remember, one, this is a safe playground. You know, this is the place to make mistakes. And I want you to push the boundaries a bit. Be a little bit crazy. Be more humorous like you would be with your mates in the pub. And actually play with physiology and tonality. So I wish you all the very best of luck and thank you so much for listening. Thanks so much for coming. So and now we're gonna have some awesome speeches to wow you, I'm sure. <laughs> and I, I don't know what all they're on their honeymoon, so um, y'all should deliver some excellent speeches.
the speeches. <laughs> and you're free to leave. <laughs> <laughs> you are, are you guys happy in the sky? All right. Yeah. 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 So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, can, so. you can say no, but yeah. really, I don't want to kind of influence anyone's presentation. You have to heckle Hernandez. <laughs> <laughs>